So we're going to present now a look at the drills we did at SoCal Sword Fight 2013. This is just a peek into Meyer's system. It is certainly by no means the entirety of his art, but it's just a little bit of these pieces put together into a drill that we can do back and forth, trying to establish some of the fundamental principles of his system, and uh, and then we can go from there. So I have my trusty partner, Eric, and we are going to start our first drill at the mid blades, which means that we're both in iron gate. We've kind of come to a bind. Neither one of us has an advantage over the other at this point. So we've kind of come jogging positions, and here we are. Right? But we can't really come in without endangering ourselves, so I want to entice my opponent to come at me. So I'm going to change into the guard of right ox. And what this does is it provides now Eric an opportunity to see an opening and attack into that opening, threatening me with his point. Now I can get in pretty bad shape. So he now sees an opportunity to attack me. He wants to come forward, so he does, and he makes that attack. While he does that, in the next part of the drill, while he does that is I'm going to take that diagonal step with both feet, a single step. I'm going to step offline from his sword to the inside, and I'm going to avoid his sword. By doing that, I'm going to avoid his sword. So we're already in the mid blades. As he comes in, I'm going to step offline, diagonally with both feet, and while I do that, I'm going to suppress his sword with the downward vertical blow. So here we are, we've come into the mid blades, I make the opening, he attacks, and I suppress his blow with the downward vertical cut. And we'll do that a couple of times. So now I've created really good opportunity. I've defended him, I've suppressed his blade well to the ground. If he doesn't do anything, if he loses his balance, I've got easy opportunity to cut, thrust, whatever I want to do from that position. But the main goal is that I've defended against his initial attack. Right? If we're in that position and he wants to recover safely and threateningly, he's now going to change into the left ox. This is his most easy version of a threat, and he can continue to thrust at me from there. So the initial bind, the opening, the attack, he comes to left ox and thrusts, right? Which really means is I don't want to sit here with my sword. As he changes into the left ox, I'm going to follow him by changing back into the right ox, and I'm going to set him off, keeping my body upright without bending, ducking, dodging, or weaving, just staying nice and strong. I'm just going to set him off into the right ox, and now that's going to allow me the opportunity to attack him. Now, if he stays high with his sword, I can leave my sword high and defend against his thrust or his blade as I'm making my own thrust. But if he's going to do anything else, if he's going to change his sword at all, I want to turn my long edge down against his sword. That will keep him bound and trapped. If I leave my hand high and thrust from here, I risk leaving myself exposed to an underthrust. But if I just follow it, from that ox, and as I thrust in, I turn my edge down. Now I'm in a really good position to continue to cover his sword. So we're gonna finish that a couple of times, just like that. And once Okay, the second drill we did at SoCal was uh, we had one person start by, uh, they can come to that bind, and instead of inviting into right ox, they're going to lift their sword all the way up into the high guard, no high guard for a stroke. This is really inviting for a thrust, especially to the lower part of the uh, body or to the, to the torso. 
because my hand is fairly well still in front of my face. Trying to make an upward jab in my face isn't necessarily his best plan, but striking for my body, that's really good. In this case, I'm going to use a technique that Meyer calls striking out with my flat or striking out with my edge. I'm going to use a, and striking out with a hanging. So as I lift up, I'm going to strike out with the hanging of the sword, right? This is going to keep my hand high and use the edge of my blade or even the flat of my blade to deflect him to the outside. Right? Now I've defended against his attack, and my follow-up is, since my hand is high and my point is low, I'm just going to flip my hand so my hand is low and my point is high, and I'm going to step through and strike. If I want to, I can finish with a grab and lead into a grapple or whatever else, but my point's already taken care of my opponent. So now, to make this even cooler, Eric is going to do this to me. Right? So he's now going to make this action. He lifts his hand up, that entices me for the attack, he makes the hanging, and then he flips his sword and steps through, and he's going to strike me, right? I'm going to respond to this with what the Germans call a winding. And in order to do this, I need to make sure I have a very loose grip, firm grip, but loose on my sword. I don't want to have a death grip because I can't, I don't want to turn this at the wrist. I'm going to flip my sword so it rests on the thumb, and I'm going to turn it all the way over. I'm even going to bring the point sort of around my head as I do this, right? Right? So, he starts with the invitation, I strike, he beats down, and as he thrusts, I turn my sword over, and I'm going to strike him, keeping the short edge of my weapon against his blade. This is really fun to do if they don't ever see it coming. So if I try to keep my, my knuckle or my, my long edge against his weapon, it's never going to happen. I'm never going to be able to turn over fast enough. Right? He's going to be able to change that leverage and keep it. It's possible, but it's really sticky. But by using my short edge. There's very little he can do against it. I come to a very good leverage spot and I can just push that forwards into my thrust. Theoretically I could even turn a cut that way. Um, but those are the drills that we presented at SoCal. If you really want to have some fun with this you can actually tie those two drills together and we're going to do this now. Um, I'm going to start with the first drill. What's going to happen is, is as I strike from Ox, Eric is going to lift up his sword to defend against my strike from Ox. He's going to end up in a high guard, which is going to entice me to strike below, which will induce the hanging, followed by the step forward, and then I will wind against him. So it looks a little something like this. So we're going to do it slowly this time. So I lift up, he's going to attack, I step off, he comes to the ox and thrusts, I set him off, he lifts up, I come under, he strikes me out, 
I wind, strike. So one more time, nice and smooth. And there's our long form of the drill. Last time. So I hope you've enjoyed this peek into Meyer and you've enjoyed the drills that we've presented for you and that it helps you hopefully if you take the class that you understand a little bit more or it helps you with your research going forward. So if you have any questions, you can contact me through the Tattershall website, tattershall.org, and enjoy your fencing.